Right, I'm Aaron He, the Product Manager for Sony Venice for AP Region. Thank you for signing up for this webinar about Sony Venice. I'm very glad and grateful to be able to invite uh, our guest cinematographer, uh, DJ Kati, to this event to share about his experience on using uh, Sony Venice. Uh, let me just give a brief introduction of uh, Mr. Vijay. Vijay Kartik, IC, started his journey with the BFA in Applied Arts and quickly graduated to cinematography from the Los Angeles Film School with over 400 advertising commercials and feature films and multiple shots. He has walk, worked on films that have snack owners at some leading festivals, including the Haynes Lions for advertising. His features, Garden of Evening Mist, was showcased at Anagawa Kamaraj 2020, which is considered to be the premier festival for cinematography in the world. It is also premier at the Golden Horse Film Festival 2019, where it got nine nominations, including Best Cinematography. His other features, Manto, premier at Haynes 2018's in the Uncertain regards sections. His international works includes The Garden of Evening Miss, Jun Hoon, The Soul, and My Name's Andrea in the post productions. So, with this, uh, I have uh, some topics that I like him to share. Basically, is why did he choose Sony Venice for his projects? This is number one. And second point is why did Sony Venice? How did Sony Venice help you achieve your requirements for the projects? Number three, how's the image exocian image quality and post-production experience? And number four, key features that uh, you like about Sony Venice. And lastly, what can be further improved on this camera? With this, uh, I hand over to Vijay to share, to let him share his experience. Thank you. Here you, uh, Vijay, here you are, I hand over to you. Thanks, Aaron, for the introduction. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Karthik. I've been a DP for about 18 years now, uh, shooting in mostly in India, but I've shot in the, the US and uh, in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, so I kind of have the reputation for not having, not using one single camera system for most of my work. I usually tend to go with what the story needs and then decide the camera system and the lenses accordingly. Uh, so my journey with Ye, with the Venice, not, I wouldn't say journey, but my introduction to the Venice happened in 2019. Uh, let me share uh, my presentation with you. Yeah, so um, so the thing is, in 2019, I was approached for a, to shoot a feature called Ye Ballet. Uh, this was in India, and uh, it was inspired by a true story about these two slum kids who learned ballet and ended up going to the US to study ballet. And uh, so the film required me uh, to have uh, really small, like me to be taking the camera all around with the characters uh, and go go around being uh, inconspicuous um, and try and not scare the actors because the actors that who we were using uh, uh, were mainly non-actors. Um, let me just uh, jump to that. So like uh, Aaron said, how did the how did the Venice help me achieve my requirement? So this was for Ye Ballet. Uh, so coming back to Ye Ballet, it's it's a uh, so I wanted something which was inconspicuous, which was small, and which I could move around as quickly as possible, as fast as possible, uh, without changing too much, going from uh, straight from the feet and coming up to the face. Uh, and maybe even beyond higher and, and stuff. Uh, so that was one of the main requirements. Second requirement was uh, 
uh, like I said, in, inconspicuous so that the actors don't get too intimidated by seeing this big, huge thing in front of me, in front of them. Third thing was uh, I wanted to shoot full frame because, uh, you know, it would allow me to show the expanse uh, and the detail of the places that they live in and uh, and the detail in their dance, the moves, all that, and the sequences extra. And uh, fourth requirement was because we were shooting in actual slums and cramped spaces, I wanted something which is small, which would just be shoved in one corner or wherever I didn't need to have, I don't like, uh, I didn't need to have a big system, a uh, big camera that, you know, takes up a lot of space. So what ended up happening is uh, at the time, Sony was just, they just launched the Venice. And what attracted to me was the, uh, the Rialto system, you know, the, the, the extension, Rialto extension system that they got out. Uh, because with that, I could actually, you could actually take the imaging sensor and the imaging block with the ND filters that usually it can be separated from the main body. So what ended up happening was uh, I could freely move around with the small uh, thing in front of me, small camera, so as to the, uh, the not intimidate the actors. It was uh, free for me to move around. Uh, like like you see here in this picture, this is what I had set up. So the um, I had the system in front of me, the Rialto was in front of me with the lens. I use Sigma lenses in this, uh, because those are the only full frame lenses available at the time. Uh, and I strapped the camera body at the back. I made this uh, bag at the time. And it would allow me to really, uh, like go around the actors as they were dancing. I, I could focus on their feet if I had to, I could go low, high, whatever I wanted to do. Um, so that was a great freedom that it allowed. You know? uh, then at the same time, when I was in, uh, uh, in cramped spaces and uh, in the actual slums, it was like a room which was eight by eight, you know, eight feet by eight feet. And there you couldn't, we didn't have the, luxury of taking bigger cameras and, and all that so so here i could just strap in like take the system go go up uh, go up to the slum go up to the house shoot and come back and the third and the probably um, one of the other bigger bigger advantages was also uh, the dual iso so with dual iso what i could do was the outdoors i could shoot at 500 and uh, get a great image. Uh, and uh, the indoors, what I could do was I could shoot at uh, 2500, which is the, the, the base ISO, and not use that many lights. So I, I had some, only some lights coming in from the outside, but invariably I could just switch on a practical and then I would be ready to go. Uh, so it eased. Uh, it was easy for production in terms of budget. It was easy for me in terms of uh, saving. It saved me time and effort. Uh, so I built, we practically built in all the practicals and the lights into the set. And uh, which actually gave me uh, the freedom to actually move 300, almost 360 degrees around the actors as they were performing. Um, like you see here in this sequence, this is in the final uh, sequence where they, they're dancing in stage. And I was actually literally running around them and, uh, you know, trying to capture most of their movements and stuff. And we didn't want, we didn't want it to be like a very free flowing steady cam kind of shots. We wanted mostly handheld so we could concentrate on their faces and, and stuff. And, uh, the turnaround time from shot to shot was very, very quick. Uh, I didn't include any images from this uh, film uh, purely because I don't think still images would do justice to it. So there are links below that we'll uh, uh, provide later that you can click on. One is for the trailer and it's also on Netflix so you can watch it and 
you'll know how uh, with the movements itself when you see the movements you'll know what the camera how it helped me the second film that I'm about to show uh, the project uh, was a film called The Soul, which I shot in Taiwan. Uh, this was my second feature on the Venice. And if you see for the last uh, about probably about almost two and a half years now, I've, I've used the Venice more than any other camera that I um, have used before. Uh, this was purely because of ease of use and uh, and the way the uh, way it renders colors, the way it renders like the kind of details that the uh, that the sensor gives uh, and the camera outputs, and um, and yeah, so so yeah, so after Ye Bali, I uh, I had gone to Taiwan to meet a friend of mine where I met director Wei Hao Cheng and. Uh, he was going to start a film uh, towards the end of the year called uh, The Soul. And this was his fourth film. And when we discussed about work and the looks and uh, the look of the film, it was really uh, important to him that the look, he didn't want a very high contrasty uh, look to it that you need because Usually what happens is people, when they say, okay, it's going to be set, it's a story set in the future. It's a, it's a murder mystery, but like in a fantasy murder mystery, you tend to go really uh, high contrast. So we decided uh, he wanted it to be low contrast and, and soft uh, and not be like cyberpunkish, if I may say that. Uh, so... I showed him some of the footage of Ye Ballet, and I also showed him some footage of some commercials that I'd shot with the Venice earlier. And then we decided to go anamorphic uh, because with anamorphic, it would really, uh, and with anamorphic and the color rendition that uh, Venice provided, um, it really helps uh, help tell the story for this film. You know? So, he really liked it. And so like the requirement for the soul was to shoot Super 35 anamorphic and in true 4K and record data that was not as heavy for VFX. So at the time, the Venice was the only camera that was offering uh, true 4K when it comes to Super 35. And uh, with the new XOCN uh, uh, codec, uh, the container basically, it would record uh, images and it would record so much of data uh, in such a small container and such a small file size uh, with so much detail that uh, it helped production, it helped the VFX guys uh, in terms of uh, rendering, in terms of uh, capturing the image, like saving data, going through it. Um, and workings as such. So, so like I said, it was the only camera at the time that gave a true 4K output when using the Super 35 mode. And I used this mode to shoot uh, with the Cook anamorphic eye lenses, mostly in the 4K 665 mode. And uh, the XOCN codec also proved useful in VFX recording uh, the most information in a much smaller file size. And like I said before, the color rendition of the sensor was perfect for the look of the film. Uh, let me take you through some more images from the film. Like you see here, uh, if you see the left, the, the two images on the on the top and bottom, uh, that was the look that we were trying to achieve. This is, if I may say so, this is not that much graded. It's not very far from the look that we had on set. Uh, we did use a little bit of smoke to get uh, the, the feel that the atmospheric uh, to reduce contrast and get a little bit of atmosphere in it in the image but mostly this is what we captured um, on the on the images on the right what you would see is uh, uh, the computer actually this computer screen does not do that much justice to this but uh, if you can watch it on Netflix please watch it on Netflix <laughs> preferably on your on your bigger screens. Um, 
but yeah like i said the the two images on the right uh, are from the opening scene of the of the film opening not opening scene in the opening of the film the, in the first few uh, first half of the film where you see the murder being committed and way how and we were very both both of us were very uh, um clear in in thinking that we, we we didn't want to see as much detail but we wanted enough that would allow people to see what was going on you know so if you see here there is uh, uh, enough and more detail that the that the camera put out and there's only actually there's only two lights which are coming from the outside into the room and that's all i used and maybe just one astro tube just to give him a little bit of a a uh, kick or a backlight from the back while i was shooting his close ups the this is um eric's close ups while he was committing the murder uh but yeah i mean i wouldn't have been able to do this i probably if i had another camera at the time i think maybe i'll have to add me i would have gotten the same image but i would have had to pump in a lot more light sure it didn't allow any it allowed me to do this with lesser light and and it was also fairly quicker these are other images from the film uh, on the left if you see that's uh, chang chen uh, in his home this is uh, on the right is jang chen in his office and below also it's uh, it's his, it's his partner and uh, wife at to not wife uh, girlfriend in their home um in terms of color palette what we had decided was the uh, so this is about jang chen who's in his terminal stage of cancer and his relationship with his partner and also is uh, his sole work towards solving this case uh, so we decided to keep the uh the work part of his life cold and the home part of the or his love or the his home part uh more warmer more soothing to see and uh, like you see you'll see a lot more warmer tones when you see the film uh i've shared the link uh when you see the film you'll know the differences between the two uh places and the two how we've kind of kept their relationship warmer whereas his relationship with the cold uh, with the case and stuff it's always cold <laughs> this is a good example also like the first uh, the left image is of him or at work which is which is cool uh and on the right side that is him with his uh explaining to his partner about what's going to happen um uh, towards the end uh, of his life uh, so yeah and and the one below is towards the beginning of the film when he's a little more healthier but it's still warm warm warmer than um, you know when he's at work uh, there are some bts scenes that i'll show you that's uh, we have with me we have and me going through some shots uh, on the left on the right that's uh, me with the uh, with our focus puller jimmy uh, so and you see that uh, you know that's the rialto with the cocanomorphic lenses and here you you know it's a very interesting thing that you can see here is uh, i used the rialto not only because it was small and not only just for handheld stuff but the beauty of it is that you can actually put in a base plate and and uh, keep it on all the time and then i can just slap it on to a head when i want to and get smooth movements and if you are jumping from a studio like a like a regular smooth movement if i if you are jumping from that scene to another scene which required a lot of handheld i can just pluck it off the head and and just i'll be ready to shoot so that was a really really big advantage and the next image that i'm going to show see uh, show you as on the left there is a there's me with the gaffer chinghan who's next to me uh 
that's the camera is in studio mode, like you see, uh, without the Rialto. And on the right is uh, the same camera, but it's with the Rialto. It's on the Rialto, but it's on the head. So here, the difference was that on the left, I had some space. On the right, I didn't have space. So the Rialto really actually helped me to be as far back in the room as much as possible. Still, with still getting me like locked shots and smooth shots, uh, as in with movement and and stuff. And uh, on the left, because I had space, I could use the full camera. Um, and another great thing about the the Rialto system or or the Venice rather is for you to go from studio mode to uh, to Rialto it takes you like less than ten minutes, you know. Uh, so it really, and in 10 minutes, you can actually do a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's meaning, I don't think it can be faster than, you, you, you don't need to be faster than that. So, uh, so yeah. That's me with Weihau. Again, we are outdoors. Uh, this is in studio mode, like I mentioned. Uh, that's with Jimmy on the left. And here again, with the sheer amount of detail that, that, the camera that the sensor captures, uh, you're sometimes you're you're fighting to actually get contrast, <laughs> which is which is uh, earlier when we used to shoot on film, we used to strive to get more detail and lesser contrast. And now because now that we have been given so much detail, we as DPs are trying to get more contrast, but. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we'll we'll ever be happy as as uh, DPs, but but that's the truth. And uh, but but with this, at least you know I can I have the option of of changing contrast in post, getting more than what is necessary to. Uh, let me go on to I'll show you another. These are some clips, uh, not clips rather. Sorry, uh, these are stills from a very recent commercial that I shot. Again, in anamorphic with the uh, Venice. And uh, here again, I use the Rialto and um, it was shot with the Hawk anamorphic lenses. And uh, it was shot Super 35 in true 4K. Uh, let me take you to the image. That's, if you see this, this image, uh, there's light just coming from the outside and you had, uh, we had given a little bit of smoke in the studio, but there was so much detail that the camera was picking up that I actually had to put black on the ceiling to cut contrast and to cut bounce off and to cut down the details. But uh, I literally did not add any light inside. So the image on the right that you see, this, uh, the one where she's closed the curtain, that literally didn't have any fill light whatsoever. I didn't have any bounce. It's only the light coming from outside. And uh, so most of it is just that, you know, I, I, was, I had that and I had just had to bounce light to get detail on her face. Like you can see on the left, this is a projector light that's hitting her face. And that's, that's my light, which I've uh, kind of recreated some light. But, but as you can see, you can, there's like lots and lots of uh, detail. Key features that I like about the Venice. Uh, like I've mentioned before, uh, dual ISO. I think that's one of the biggest things that I like about the Venice. Uh, great thing is it's hot swappable. So I can just quickly go from 500 to uh, 2,500, like in about three seconds or yeah, less than three seconds. And uh, which allows me to actually jump from indoor to outdoor spaces quicker with the same amount of light that I would have used. You know? So it's, it's, a, it's really a boon sometimes to have uh, dual eyes. So uh, then the Rialto extension, like I mentioned, um, the way the sensor renders the colors, you know, it's a, uh, if people who are used to, like say the Arri or the red, 
at a you'll be used to a little warmer image but over here at least you have uh, like it is a different it's a sheer amount of detail that it throws out is beautiful uh, and the other thing that i really like about it is that it has a certain kind of a noise floor which is which reminds me of uh, film you know the noise floor the sensor reminds me of the grains in film so it's very subtle but it's very nice uh the built in nd filters it's great it has eight stops uh with single stop increments um it goes straight from 0.3 to 2.4 uh, i don't need to add any filters in front any of the nd filters in front to cut right at least here it's great it's behind it's on the sensor it's clean i don't get extra colors or anything as such uh so that's great and then there's the true 4k when you use uh, super 35 mode and uh, oh and so yeah, i forgot to add one thing which is it's i can do 6k and 4k at the same time using and now because we are in digital and we have the option of of uh, zooming into an image or cropping in cropping an image and all on set i can actually be shooting on 6k and then if i want to go really like tighter to something where i like to stay tighter to into a face but i i don't have the lens to do that i can just quickly change it to 4k and then <clears throat> get the same kind of uh, uh framing but much tighter without much loss in quality or resolution resolution yes but without much loss in quality uh <clears throat> excuse me about uh, the exocian image quality and post production experience um i've just written down a small thing that uh, that came to my mind when i thought about exocian i'll just read it out uh, exocian is a very dynamic and efficient codec that allows for a lot of dynamic range contrast and brightness to be captured at, ne at a negligible file size the quality and flexibility that it offers in post production is vast and it truly is able to represent the images that we capture in as authentic a way as possible when compared to real life a lot of other codecs mimic this response but the thing that stands out the most with exocian is the fidelity <coughs> excuse me is the fidelity of the reproduction of the image when debayered and processed through a post pipeline it's held up great for both demanding deliverables and both in both sdr and sdr rams and hasn't really fallen apart yet so like i said you know um ye belly was was finished in hdr later in post whereas uh, the soul was uh, finished in 2k but it was beautiful like you know i could i, I had the detail and the wherewithal to uh, to take it to hdr later when i was doing and that was a decision that was taken later by netflix and not when we were shooting so <clears throat> what can be further improved on this camera i i am actually very happy with what they've given me there's i can't be any i'm very happy with it but i don't really see uh uh like a huge thing but i've just put down some like three things that i would i would need they are small very small things that i think they might already be working on but uh like the menus i think maybe if you just simplify the menus a little bit it'll be good not for me but for uh for my assistants sometimes who uh who are not that you know well versed uh in like not well versed or educated they learn on the job so uh, so it can sometimes get daunting and overwhelming you know when they are trying to adjust something on the fly uh it recently happened to me on one of my shoots where there was some some option open and something wasn't working and you know they had to really dig in deep into the camera to actually figure out that there was one small thing that was turned on so that if they can figure out it would be great um the second one i think if you can have an access to change in the base is to from the operator side too so it allows me to so when i 
shoot, I do a lot of handheld. And for me, I have the operation, I have the option of uh, changing it from the operator side. I have the option of changing the uh, uh, the ISO uh, regularly, not the base, but ISO, the shutter, shutter angle, the white balance, and the NDs on the left. But if you had, if you give me the option of changing the base ISO, it's great, and I don't have to rely on my assistant doing it from the other side, and you know them kind of screwing it up and stuff so which has happened in the past but but yeah so i would i would rather it would be great if i can actually have the option of doing it myself and the last probably would be that in the rialto if you could give me maybe two more aux power inputs uh aux power ports that would be great because uh, then i don't have to rely on third party systems to provide me with extra auxiliary ports or splitters and that kind of stuff you know so it's a, it's a system and um, that i completely believe in like sony system i don't have too many other cables coming out of other accessories so uh, i think for me that would probably sum up uh, what i like about the venice right now and uh, so yeah i'll just let me just stop sharing for now and um, so yeah i think this is this is probably what i can say in in a nutshell about why i like the venice and uh, why it helps me get my like how it helps me uh, how it makes my job easier for me you know and uh, like I said before, like even probably my my ACs would also agree that I I probably not used a camera before this for so long. Um, like I've been also always constantly switching cameras, but here it's I've got something that helps me tell my story, whatever the uh, yeah whatever the story is. And uh, the only time actually now that I've probably not used the the venice is when uh, it's not available in some states and so so I, I probably think that's that's what i can say yeah so i really yeah that i just take it over to you for, yeah. for the thank, you. Uh, thank you vj uh, thank you for your precious time to be able to share your experience about using sony venice yeah uh, so we hope maybe in, in india there'll be more states that will be able available uh, Sony Venice, so that y'all can shoot free <laughs> in any way you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, you know sharing about how we can actually further improve on the camera and uh, your experience is really very precious to us. So uh, yeah. So for those uh, who have uh, watched this video and if you have any uh, question and answer, do uh, feel free to drop it in chat box and things like that. Uh, we will. Uh, try to follow up uh, on your questions that you have or any inquiries regarding about this camera. Uh, I hope this uh, sharing by uh, VJ uh, will be very beneficial to you and uh, hopefully you will consider trying out shooting with this camera. Uh, thank you very much for attending and uh, listening to this uh, session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jay, thanks. Thanks for sharing. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.